Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Time Tip. Today, we're going to talk about reverb. I want to share with you some of my favorite tips and tricks and how I generally go about selecting and dialing in a reverb for different tasks. Before we do that, though, I have the Brit JM45 amp model, the JFET compressor, and Factory Bank 2, cab number 848 on here. With my PRS, it sounds like this. <laughs> So let's start by talking about how to select a reverb type. I have the reverb block at totally stock settings, and you can see it defaults to the medium room. The first thing I would encourage you to do is to try out some different reverb types, and this is how I do it. Let's click on the reverb type, and let's do this. Let's type in medium up here. I'm going to hit return on there, and this will filter out all those reverb selections. So I just have the medium types for spring, room, plate, hall, chamber, and cathedral. I'm going to use the pin up here so that I can audition these without having this window closed. So I could start by comparing, say, a medium plate reverb to a medium hall reverb, and then compare it to the other medium types so that I can figure out which type of reverb I'm going to gravitate towards. <laughs> So you can hear out of those types, they all had a very different character. The chamber, hall, and cathedral all had longer decays on them. They sounded like they were kind of on a spectrum when it came to decay and size. Whereas the plate reverb sounded a bit darker, but still had a bit of a longer decay. Whereas the room was much more of just a kind of general ambience and the spring had a very very definitive character in that kind of had metallic trails, sounded totally different to all the other reverbs on there. Out of those, my favorite was the medium plate. So the next thing I would do, I'm gonna type in plate up here and I can audition all the different types of plate reverbs in here. I'll basically repeat that thing. I would encourage you to just play like a percussive G chord or something. So you can kind of hear the early reflections in there and the general decay of the reverb. So I kind of think I want something that's maybe not massive, but also not super small. So I'm gonna rule out the small plate and the large plate to start out with. So let's start maybe with the medium plate and I'll use that as a reference point and I'll compare it to some of the others. <laughs> So the London plate there was very dark. It was a bigger sounding reverb on there. Let's hear the sun plate in comparison. That was more of a brighter plate sound in there. So I think a lot of people are probably either gonna really love the London plate or the sun plate, depending on what type of reverb they like. When it comes to plate reverbs, uh, we could repeat this experiment with different hall reverbs, for example. I'm actually gonna do that really quickly, but we will come back to the different plate types. There's lots of halls in here and you can compare something like a small hall to something like a chorus hall. That's a massive sounding one in there. That's actually one of my favorite hall types in there. But I'm gonna go to my old standard kind of selection, the London plate in here. This is probably my favorite all around reverb in the box. So now we can actually talk about some things we can do with the reverb block. There are a lot of parameters, but in general, I would say stick to time, size, and mix. In fact, one thing you could do is you could assign these parameters to the per preset perform page on the Axe FX3 and then tweak them as real knobs using the front panel encoders. But in general, if I was going for kind of a really effecty sounding reverb, I would increase the time, the size, and the mix. And I would do the opposite if I just wanted a general ambience. So let's say I wanted a kind of general ambience. 1.5 seconds is pretty good for a plate on guitar. I just like plates in general on guitar. I'd actually bring the size down a little bit and we can set the mix to 10%. This is a really good starting point if you want one of those kind of reverbs that you may not notice when you're actually playing with it, but when you turn it off, 
you miss it. So we'll start with it on, then I'll turn it off. You really hear it's kind of missing that spatial aspect. It's gonna sound really dry and in your face and then I'll bring it back in. as a general ambience, uh, we can do the opposite. Let's say I wanted more of a kind of effective reverb. I would bring up the time, I would bring up the size, and I would bring up the mix. Generally, anything above 30% is gonna start to sound pretty massive. So we get something like this. <laughs> I really like that. Now, if we dive a bit deeper, something about that London plate reverb that I love is that it is a darker sounding reverb. And if we go to the EQ section, this is actually being overhauled in the latest firmware. Uh, we can get in there and we can actually EQ the reverb. And you notice there is quite a lot of high cut happening in this reverb. So let's say I took another reverb. Let's say I was a hall person. I wanted to use that chorus hall in there but I wanted to drag it more in this London plate direction. What I could do is I could set that high cut frequency a bit lower. I could even play around with the high cut slope. I could set it to 12 dB per octave and we would get this, check it out. So this particular reverb has these lovely modulated tails to it. It's got a very different decay character than the plate, but it is nice and dark sounding. Uh, the ultimate kind of reverb hack though, I think is using a uh, low cut in here. This is the so-called Abbey Road trick. So what I would do is use a low cut anywhere from 250 Hertz upwards. I'm actually gonna start at 400 Hertz on this one. Bring the mix up. And what this is gonna do uh, is I'll set that back all the way down and we'll start at 400. Basically remove low end from the reverb. So it's not gonna kind of clog up our main guitar tone, but we will still have those nice kind of tails on there that I've actually taken a lot of high cut out of. We could add that back if this is too much, but I think this is gonna sound pretty sweet. <laughs> I love the way that works right there. Another cool deep tweak is to add some modulation to the reverb. You can see this particular reverb here has quite a slow rate and quite a lot of depth. So let's start with a different reverb type that doesn't have any modulation on it and use that trick. Uh, what other fun reverb can I use in here? There's so many great types. Well, look, we've got the Opera House reverb, which is a new type and sounds particularly lush at stock settings. Let's try that one. <laughs> Beautiful, let's get in there and with the EQ, use that EQ trick and remove a bunch of low end from there. <laughs> So we're just making some space for our guitar there. And I'm gonna crank up the modulation depth so those repeats uh, just kind of start to sound like they've been run through a very subtle chorus. <laughs> Mm. 
It's absolutely awesome, isn't it, for those big ambient style reverbs. We can also play around with ducking the reverb just like we would duck a delay. And we can actually get in and tweak stuff like the early level, the input diffusion. You can go full reverb geek on here. But I would recommend people just stick to those parameters, the time, size, and mix. Use that trick where you use the pin and the different search options to kind of figure out the type of reverb you actually like. That's a really interesting one. I find a lot of the time we tend to just rely on our preferences. Like if you've only ever used plate type reverbs, you go straight for the plates. But uh, you can kind of open up some different sounds if you do that procedure there. And then, like I said, time, size, and mix. Try these EQ tricks in the reverb to carve out some space for your guitar. I find this is particularly effective if you're trying to like thicken up a distorted guitar signal, which let's do that. I'll turn this compressor off. I'm going to change the amp to this USA lead mid game. And let's go back to good old London plate. And what we can do there is bring up the low cut. Actually, I'll leave it there just so you can hear uh, how this works. I'll set the mix at about 20%, which might be higher than I would actually use it, but we'll just increase the low cut until we carve out some extra clarity on our guitar. <laughs> Gives you an awesome sense of space, but it's not really interfering with the low end, which we all know on heavily distorted electric guitars is all important. So there's a few little reverb tips and tricks. If you have any particular reverb types that you're in love with, let me know in the comments. Or if you have any other tips and tricks you would like to see or hear for other blocks, please let me know in the comments as well. Hope you all have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Tuesday for another Tuesday Tone Tip.